Welcome to Pop Culture Retro, which was recently voted the 15th best podcast by the residents of the Golden Years Retirement Community in Boca Raton, Florida. Each show, we'll revisit some of your favorite pop culture memories with insider and outsider perspectives. Now, please help me welcome your hosts, Ike Eisenman and Jonathan Rosen. Hello and welcome to another edition of Pop Culture Retro. I'm one of your hosts, Jonathan Rosen, along with the incomparable Ike Eisenman. And today <laughs> we have a very special episode. And I was so happy when Ike suggested this. We're, you know, we're normally playing in, in Ike's backyard. Today we're going to be coming into mine a little bit. And we're going to discuss the our favorite childhood books. And uh, no, no top fives or any top tens or anything like that. Just a little bit about what we liked, you know, what we remember fondly. And before we go into it, and I think I've asked you this before a little bit, and I know you did read it, but what were your impressions of the Escape to Witch Mountain book by Alexander Key? And oh. I don't remember if you read that. Be did, now, you read that before you started shooting the film, right? I did. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I, I knew it the movie was based on a book and I wanted to read it. I, I, I went out and found um, a, a paperback version of it and it's so funny because like we we're sitting here we're sitting here talking about the olden days of everything you know right. when you actually had to, had to go to a used bookstore you know to find um titles like that um and i i picked it up i read it and i um because i i was 11 years old not quite 11 yeah i was i was 11 years old when i made the film so that was a pretty young age to read the book because i think escaped witch mountain as a novel was geared a little bit more to almost towards a high school age i mean it was That's very was dark ask you about that. yeah it was like, very dark very eight yeah um very dark very strange very different and it fascinated me the similarities that disney took from the story and then turned it into a disney type of story well, kind of keeping, you know, the movie wasn't that dark, but nowhere near as dark as as the book was, and um, and I, I I just found that particularly interesting. I can't say I enjoyed the book necessarily, but I did find it very interesting. But yes, I very much did read it, and I read it again um, in the last couple of years, uh, just to just to revisit it and and see. And what were your you thoughts know, now when revisiting it? Pretty much the same pretty much the same it 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 it, it actually doesn't it, as i recall because it doesn't stick with me a lot of it you know the you know the um the the end was sort of weird and and ambiguous almost in a way that w was unsettling i think in the book versus the movie um, now, i've not read the book so what, what was the end there i, I yeah didn't I, the I, I really i really bear i really barely remember I really, I really don't. That's so funny because that's that's what I'm saying. It just, it didn't really stick with me. I mean, some things okay. stick with me hard and fast, but this one, this one, not so much. And it's a, it's a short read. It, it's, it's, you know, not a very, not a very dense story. I'm looking up at it on the bookshelf right now, because um, yeah, I have all this, all this stuff right in front of me on the other side of my computer, so I can glance at them when I, when I want to or need to. But um, yeah, yeah, it was just, yeah. Um, it, it, it just had it just, I don't know I kind of know how to describe it it just had more of a like a, a street story kind of feel to it like you know these the two orphans they were getting into trouble the the, the Tony character I don't even remember no if the I think their names were the same but um the the Tony character got into a lot more serious trouble and the two of them were very troubled over all of this mm -hmm. so it had a it had an ounce of you know, a, a, a feeling of realism to it that that was more so than the movie. Um, so you know, yeah, it's 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 a tad hard to describe because I just it just didn't uh, it didn't stick with me that that much. Yeah, I'm going to have to read the book. Did, did Alexander Key come out to the shooting ever? Did you get to meet him? No, no, mm -mm, not at all. No. Never met him. No, he didn't. Um, I don't think he had. I don't think he had anything to do with uh, the screenplay at all. He just, I think he just got based upon the book by credit. Um, and that was, that was pretty much it, but yeah. 
Oh, yes, that's that kind of, if they make a movie of my book, I'm there. I'm, I want to see it being done. Oh, absolutely. It. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's a perfect segue, because speaking of which, we have to we have to out you as the <laughs> um, prolific author that you are. There we go. Um, I have m- many of my books there and some behind <laughs> me and my art director wife, Tia, set this up for me. But, you know, you can't probably see it on the screen, but I have two <laughs> books by someone I know that... Uh, yeah that are absolutely fantastic. And I'm going to get them up here. Jonathan's, um, his two middle grade horror stories, uh, Night of the Living Cuddle Bunnies and From Sunset, Sunset to Sunrise. I always mix that up. Um, and I'm going to put a graphic up for everybody so they had a chance to sit on these because they're the most entertaining middle grade. I, I, don't, I don't read a lot of middle grade, so I did not quite know what to expect, but they're so entertaining and they read like movies more than books. Very clever. And if you don't get the references in the titles to the movie references, then there's something wrong with you. That's all I have to say. But anyway, so I, our- I appreciate so my, that. Now, now I don't look like a jerk, like self-promoting. So that's good. Thank you for that. I didn't know you were- Oh, no, 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 no. I'm, I, I'm happy to do this, the shameless plug for you. They are available on Amazon and they're they're absolutely delightful reads. So I highly recommend- And independent them. bookstores everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I have, uh, thank goodness for go. that. Because I still I, love, no, I still I, love bookstores. I really do. But um, me too. I, I that's one of the things I, I do love. I love going into and I have a Kindle and I do read a lot of books on Kindle too, but there's nothing like going into a bookstore and oh, yeah. uh, just bra- or library, whatever, just browsing all the titles and it's a different yeah, feel. It, it used it used to be kind of just a little outing. Um my an area in in, in Sherman Oaks where I spent my most most formative years um we lived very close to you know very close to a mall that had a lovely big bookstore in it and my mother and i used to go just hang out at the mall sometimes on a saturday she enjoyed books she was a she liked romance novels which cracked me up <laughs> um but so we would just go and and wander the book bookstore and i found i i, I think a lot of my titles that I have on here were things that I that I simply found during that process or I was aware enough of that I went and sought them sought them out um but yeah I just that was always and remains to this day um you know somewhat similar to what we talked about in our our Betamax VHS mm-hmm. discussion and in, in um the video store you know the videos and DVDs when you could go look through everything and touch everything i'm tactile yep. i can't help it i'm tactile i gotta pick it up look at it thumb through <laughs> it same thing you know you know like <laughs> so but anyway i mean this i, I i'm excited about this too because yes we're more in your wheelhouse this is your your passion your profession um and um clearly i can see from your background that you've got there's <laughs> all these titles in a series that i know absolutely well, nothing well, we're going to discuss about. it believe me we're going to discuss those <laughs> so, okay i want to ask one more question about alexander key just just the thing because i have it here and i i saw that there was a book from re, for return from which mountain to now i'm assuming there was just a novelization of the movie right there was not not a book that came out first that he did not write a sequel and then Disney went ahead and made the movie. No, it definitely was a novelization. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. sure of that. I, 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 I can't say I have direct knowledge of that, but I have to assume as much because I mean, you, you talk about a completely different tone of story between mm-hmm. escape to which mountain and return from which mountain. I always kind of say, re, I, I think return, return from which mountain I even get them mixed up sometimes. Return from Witch Mountain is much more of what I call a traditional Disney movie with a lot of right. antics in it, you know, many more kids. Oh, yeah, I and, would, I would agree. You know, yeah. just the hijinks and the ridiculous villains. I I, I adored it for, for all of that, but I don't think that was anywhere in um, Alexander Keyes. Um, yeah. See, I was just work. curious if he, if he, I mean, did he, if he even wrote the novelization or, or, that the movie came out and someone wrote it and just attributed it to him. That's what I was like, just curious. I about. really, I, I don't know the answer because to that question. That's a great, character. that's a great, that's a great trivia question. Um, so I'll have to, I'll have to look it up and see. I don't, I don't think I'm I have, have the book, the book version of that in my collection. I don't, I don't think I do. 
So I, I see it is on Amazon. It's like selling for like 35 bucks because it must, oh, not wow. be, it must be out of print or something. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. So what were you, so, what were some of your favorites as a, as a kid? <laughs> well, we always start with me, but I'm hoping you, you, you want to start you, with me. I don't, you again. Yeah. Let's start, let's start with you. Cause I, I, I think I, it, I was an odd child. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was reading Edgar Allan Poe and Isaac Asimov and that kind of stuff. Um, and I, you know, I don't know if that's necessarily unusual, especially at a young 10, 11 years, 10, 11 years old. So, um, but, but yeah, I want to start with you and, and kind of see what, 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 and I'm going to ask you the question. What was the first book you read that just right. blew your mind? I have different stages too. And that's, that's the thing. I have different stages of reading and it, it all, <clears throat> I, I think I mentioned to you before, I, I moved around a lot with my, uh -huh. my parents. My parents moved a lot. We lived in different countries, um, you know, different places. I, I lived in Mexico for a time. I lived in Israel for a time. So there, there, I always look at my, my life as blocks instead of like one long thing, where, which period of my life we were in because of that. And I started off and I much the same like you when I was a, when I was a young kid. I read a lot of books for adults. First of all, I'll, I'll, I will start with comic books. Comic books were my first read, and I know it's not it's not kids books, but I read so many comics, mm. and I collect, and I still have the majority of them. I still have like you know in my, in the other room, I still have like three thousand comics or something still safe. Oh wow! Um, so I, I still and it's I moved around a lot, but I I was able to find Spider Man. I was able to find Spider Man was always my favorite. And I think maybe it was like identified with Spider-Man a lot too, because he was, you know, the loner, you know, not alone. And, and I had friends, but it wasn't, you know, but I was not one of the popular kids when at these stages of my life. So, um, you know, the loner, you know, shy, very, you know, very quiet until he put on that mask. And, you know, this is the real him coming out the joke, you know, he made jokes, he was, you know, more sure of himself when he had was able to hide behind the identity. So that was probably Spider Man, like I read it in Mexico, I read it, I remember reading it overseas, even. And just because they were available. And so it was like, I guess, brought me back to home. And uh, so those were, those were some of the things that I really stuck out with. And I'll get to other books afterwards. But the first book, like you said, that really blew my mind. And again, I'm reading adult books as a kid. And I did read a lot of kids' books, and I'm going to discuss those. But when I was a kid, I read those great illustrated classics. I don't know if you read those. Do you, you remember those? I don't know. I'm not familiar with those. They, they, had, they took the adult books and they put them into like, they condensed them and made them like, you know, appealing to kids. They were illustrated, like they had pictures throughout. So like... Um, one of the things, and I still have that one, the the Hound of the Baskervilles, the Sherlock Holmes one, and uh -huh. my my dad would always get me those like illustrated classics. So I got to read a lot of you know adult books, but they were made for kids. And mm. uh, I'm gonna have to find the graphic. And I, I couldn't find the book in time for this. I, I, it's, it is here because I do have it, and I posted a picture of it before. But I love those illustrated classics, and uh, so I read many things and i read even i remember reading also agatha christie and then there were none it was one of my favorite books as a kid wow. and i probably read that before i was old enough to be <laughs> that book yeah but i've never I read i have never read any agatha christie i never yeah, oh. nothing 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 like that and i feel like i have so much catching up to do in in so many ways but i bet you were a voracious reader i bet I'm you read sorry. a lot yeah Constantly. Uh, and, and and first of all, and then there were none. It's probably one of the great mysteries of, of all time. Oh, uh, okay. and, I'm, and, you know, this is no hyperbole. This is, I, I thought this was ingenious, <laughs> the, the plot. So you, I, I'm not going to spoil it for you, because I do think you should read that eventually or anyone else. Don't. I'm, I'm trying to come one... up with something to read on a trip I, I have coming up. So I was actually going to, during the show, ask you for a recommendation. I think that might <laughs> just be, that might just be it. Yeah. I'll just give you the basic premise there. They're like, and they've, you've seen this in so many movies since. And I'm not sure if this is the first one that did this, you know, all the, and it was done like in the movie murder by death a little bit, which is, you know, that all these people invited out to, you know, an Island and uh, with some mysterious person and one by one, they were all killed off. 
Ah, <laughs> okay. Yeah. And then we and then we have to figure out who the murderer is. So right. it's it's really and and the end result was the, the the solution was ingenious and I really think you know people should read that. But the, again, this is what I was reading at this stage of my life. <laughs> you know, About, and how old how 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 do you remember how old you were when you encountered this? I was probably around I would say nine, ten when I was reading these books. Yeah, these, see the, that, that seems to be an interesting Christian. age, yeah, for just an interesting age because I was about the same for me because my my first book and pretty much the same age that hit me I think I was probably nine years old and I don't know what attracted me to it but um it's the caves of steel by Isaac Asimov um part of his robot I've series read that. Okay. yeah I and I I I you know as I've discussed ad nauseum you know I'm, I'm a huge sci science fiction fan it was since i was very very young and so once i started to um i i, I started reading and i don't really remember what i read before that but i i picked up i found the caves of steel i read it and it was just like it just amazed me that out of someone else you know someone else could come up with the idea of you know, a world where we live with robots and work with robots and that there's, there, there's that, that all of this would function in, in, a, in a futuristic setting and in a way that was outlined in the book because it's really kind of just a, not just, it's really kind of a, um, um, I don't want to say a detective story. They're trying to solve a, a murder and, um, and the detective's partner is a robot. And you just going through the relationship between these two characters was really incredible. And it just, it just exploded my imagination. I think that's what started to happen. Then I started seeking out as much material like that as I could find. And I read more Asimov and you know, the foundation series. And um, so, is, so but, is that the movie? Is that the one that I robot was made from the, that? Well, book? I think it was a blend of the stories because I robot and I don't think I ever read I robot, which is odd. It, that's more a collection of short stories about the the within his his Asimov's universe the history of robot uh, development and and all mm -hmm. of that and I think they kind of blended they blended both of those for the movie which is of course horrendous in my opinion it's just it's just it's just <laughs> awful I mean you know and I and I love I, I gotta tell you I, I really love Will Smith but when they turned it into a comic book they just turned it into a you know a, a comic book it was just ridiculous it didn't do it did not do that any justice and I'm I'm hoping one day it's like some of these books now that that I'm going to mention are now being made or remade into you know long you know the the, our, our new media format, whether it's Netflix long long form or just mm -hmm. revisiting their 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 making as films, given that the technology is available now to do them justice, um, it's exciting to see. And I'm hoping it, the dust settles on that, and somebody goes in at Netflix or Amazon and decides, mm -hmm. you know, these stories are worth telling properly. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm just going to interject this because we're talking about books, but, you know, Harry Potter, which is, of course, not part of our this discussion. Um, I think I think Harry Potter is, believe it or not, ripe for a potential remake as a super long format, like four year, you know, five well, year in Amazon, something like that. I mean, I don't I just think it would be an outstanding revisit where you could spend that much more time because the movies are so hard. We talk about books and movies. It's so hard sometimes to contain the story from a book into a two and a half to three hour format. I, I just, I agree. you I lose just... so much and you don't get to spend the, the proper amount of time to build through it. But anyway, I'll get to more of those later. So that was what got me hooked and I love to read. I was very much of a loner myself, so reading was a big was a big deal for me. And and uh, and so I I ended up enjoying them tremendously. And like like I said, my mother was the only reader in the house, and she read romance novels, which just cracked me right. up. And so you know that that was the extent of the literature. I brought it all into the house. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to say, I'm going to say one thing quickly here. I'm going to let you continue. I, you just made me laugh because I am going to when I replay this 
episode for my kids. They always watch it after it comes out. I'm going to have to fast forward your comments about iRobot because I just say I did like the movie, but but I I didn't read the book, so I you know maybe that would you know cloud my judgment. But iRobot is one of the movies I've been trying to get my son to watch with me. So when he hears, and he he has, he wants no part of it. So if he hears you say oh it was terrible, I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm just gonna have fast forward it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he oh, will watch okay. that movie with me. <laughs> okay. Well, it's just it's just one it's just one person's opinion, and it's and I'm jaded. I'm jaded by because it, it was so un- influential that, at a young young age. And I, to be honest, I don't remember that much about it, and I'm starting to think I might want to reread it because. And I did re- reread one of my other books here just yesterday. That's on my list, which we'll get to later. Just because I wanted to, I wanted to dive back into that that nostalgic feeling of what it was like, you know, what how I connected to it at a young age, and we've talked right. about that with some of the media we consume, where we like to, you know, even in, and it's the same with music, where we want to go back and 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 kind of have that that warm fuzzy discovery, um, and you know, and enjoy that once again. So. You know, iRobot could have maybe a better movie than I think it is, but I, I just I just think they turned it into too much of a cartoon where if it could have been a very, a very realistic story instead of so, you know, a portrayal instead of I'm the, sure you know, the, you're right. the Will Smith tongue in cheek thing. The reviews were great. <laughs> so I'm yeah. sure you're close to right. But like I said, I did not have the book to, to influence my opinion on that. Yeah. And I think yeah. you're also right with the Harry Potter. I think. And I have no doubt in my mind they probably will do a Harry Potter Amazon thing because you saw they're doing a redo of Lord of the Rings on Amazon now. And the movies were incredible and they're doing a series of Lord of the Rings now. Well, I thought they were talking about that, but I didn't know they were actually doing it. And, you know, I oh, think- Oh, no, it's, it's, it's going to be done. Yeah, they already- Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that because I, okay, Lord of the Rings is on, The Hobbit Lord of the Rings is on my list. Um, and since we're just bouncing around anyway, yeah, for yeah, me that, that was a high school read. I in in high school, I was I was junior high and high school. I was quite voracious and much more voracious in my reading than than I and, and that kind of waned. I still enjoy reading. I don't read a whole lot, um, but I did consume a lot of material then. And Lord of the Rings was one of them. And I only discovered, I only found out about it because I was in a an art class sitting next to two of the like these were great guys but they were so dorky and and they were best (laughs) friends and they were they talked about it and they were sitting right next to me as I'm drawing and I was I was very much always in my head and I was into my own art and I was doing my own drawing and they'd be talking 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 which was perfectly okay in that class because you know there was nothing to you know nothing to distract from and it wasn't a disruption and they talked about it and I just started asking them questions and they said, Oh, you got to read. It. It's the best thing ever. It's the best thing ever. Start the Hobbit. You got to start the Hobbit. So then they stopped talking about it. Let me read it. And as I'm reading it along, they would ask me where I was in the book. And I just, <laughs> and, and then they'd say, Oh, you haven't discovered, you know, smog yet. You haven't discovered this and that. And, 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 and they would bait me and set me up and tease me. So it's like I had my own preview the whole time because they knew exactly what was going to come up. And then they would kind of draw it out for me, which made it that much more fun to, <laughs> to read. But that that was a massive influence on me because I was an artist, um, you know, a, a budding artist at the time. And I was doing a lot of, I loved doing fantasy drawings. I, I got into Frank Frazetta and I got into, I think his name was Hild, Hild, Hildebrandt. Anyway, the you know, the, the, uh, the fantasy book cover artists, um, who did those just incredible, you know, incredible paintings. And I loved that stuff. And then reading the Hobbit, it just fired off my imagination. And I, I did tons of drawings, making my own character, you know, my own ideas of what the characters look like up during that period of time. So that, that, that was a, that was a big deal to me. And I would love to see it. And I, you know, I don't think Peter Jackson's, you know, I enjoyed Peter Jackson's films, but even The Hobbit, I, man, when he turned that into three movies and he turned it into <laughs> another, he turned it in, he turned it into a Marvel film. You know, it was like, it was like, it's, you know, it's like these guys are doing these superhero actions. And it's like, I get, you gotta, 
I guess maybe drag us into that into that realm, but I felt it started to lose the it's just, you know, I don't know, the delight of 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 those stories. And I'm assuming you you read Lord of the Rings. Okay, yes. And but I, I I'm going I'm really loving today's episode. I'm gonna tell you why because usually you and I agree on like everything and I disagree with you. And I like and I like this dynamic today. <laughs> <laughs> it's i i read lord of the rings and the hobbit too and 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 this is going to be blasphemous and i and the majority of the people will probably are going to agree with you but i'm going to i that was one of the things to me that i thought the movies were much better than the books i thought the, i loved the books no i can't say love i enjoyed the books but they were to me they were like long passages of the books well, like, okay, come on, let's. I kept flipping the pages. Let's get to the next thing. What's what's happening? Instead of like a lot of description on on things that are happening, like you know, background things and description of the the mountains or whatever. And to me, it was like I didn't care. I want to get to the next, you know, thing. So I agree with you one hundred percent. And I think I, I think that's part of what. Okay. Good grief. Not only that, but I could do without the ballads and the songs and the poems that go on for pages. I didn't care. I skipped over all of those. I never read any of them because I just thought I don't really care that they're singing a song about some ancient character and then we're all going to be remembered in songs. But what I liked about that kind of stuff was it rem It kind of it just it just it, it just gave an air of odd of, of strange realism to the story in something that is so yes. pure fantasy i always liked when when you could when any an author or a filmmaker could bring could make it as realistic as possible and at the same time tell a good story um mm -hmm. because i i agree with you because i tried to reread the hobbit i i was gonna i revisited a few years ago and i said this is so boring this is so <laughs> it's boring. a short book too i can't do it yeah it is it is um but i think it was i think it was like many probably many of these it was the right story at the right age for me i was just at the right age and i think you've got to be a mm -hmm. teenager and pro perhaps a younger teenager would enjoy it more i'm thinking it's more junior high school level but I enjoy the descriptions because it paint it painted pictures for me, even though it was excessive. It was very much excessive. And today I would find that incredibly tedious to read. Yeah, I want to I want to move <laughs> along. I just want to be hinted at, you know, let me paint my own picture. Give me enough information that that I that I can do that much and then and then carry on and, and move me along. But yeah, so no, I I we do agree. I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm saying that that was a pivotal book in this list in in my life for those sure. for those reasons and it was a fun way to like i said to read them as i'm sitting next to these two guys <laughs> as we talk about it you know it was fun <laughs> i i did like i said i did read those and i never got into it as much and uh until I, the movies like to me the, the movies so much as a kid and that's surprising to me because i did i like you i like fantasy i like sci-fi and uh, uh but the other series that i did get into when i was a kid and this was uh, after I moved, in, and I only found found out about them, even I didn't even know about them, which is stupidity. My, not stupidity, because I just when I moved to Israel, someone introduced me to the Narnia series, and I loved the Narnia series. I loved the Lion, the Witch, and the w Wardrobe, and I did not get any of the you know the religious <laughs> connotations back then. I knew I only found out about that there were all these you know allegories later on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I read when I read about it as an adult, but I never got that back then. I just enjoyed the story. You know, you had the good, the uh, the lion, and, and the white witch. I, I thought those were stories were amazing, and I just went through all seven of them like quickly. Wow! And, uh, I think I need. Them. I think I need to read those. I never did read those. Um, really? And yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm. I'm almost as I am as when I look at my list and I think back on all these, all these, you know, these great books, I'm as fascinated by what I never read as I am by what I chose to read. And I didn't, I did not read those. And you would think that I would have, you know, given 
that I enjoyed Lord, Lord of the Rings um, so much, but no, I just, it just didn't, they just didn't, uh, they didn't jump out at me and I didn't pick them up. What's funny to me, I enjoyed the Narnia series books. I, I love them. Uh, the movies, there's no comparison. The, the Lord of the Rings just killed the Narnia yeah. series. Yeah. The books, I like yeah. the Narnia series more, but I, the movies, there was no, no comparison with either one. Well, I, I do love the Lord of the Rings films. It's just the Hobbit that I found tedious because they just made up so much stuff. And, and, um, and I, you know, it was, I think it was necessary for him to do it, but I, you know, I, I just didn't enjoy that one as much, but the Lord of the Rings, I thought they did a very, very good job. And thank God they did it in three films. And I can tell you a true story, I, a little personal experience. I always seem to have some anecdote when it comes to these things. I was it's working good. and I can't, I can't tell you what um, what film I was working on, and I can't remember the production, the distribution company that pro, uh, that produced the the production company that produced Lord of the Rings, but obviously it was an incredibly anticipated um, first film coming out when the Fellowship was was going to be released, and I was working with one of the producers from that film on another project, doing ADR on another project, and and I I. I, I just I had to I had to pull her aside and just say you know I for one amongst many many other people are so tremendously excited that you guys have have you know taken on this film and are doing it and we really I know I just can't wait to see it and she said she she had this heavy look on her face and she says <laughs> I really hope you're right because if it doesn't go well it's going to bankrupt this company wow well and I thought, oh, you know, it's like three movies, you know, you're committed to three movies over six right. years, you know, or something like that. It was or fought four years, however long it took to roll them all out. And I thought, man, you know, that's that's a good point. But I thought I didn't think it could fail just because everyone who's read the book is going to go see the movie. And that's enough to make it a success. But you always need to pick up, you know, you have to pick up ancillary audience. You can't just you that? can't was, just feed it. Was it? it. Was it new line i, I don't remember who yes did that, new line uh, new line cinema it, it is line? yeah it is because we were working on a new line project and she was there you know, you know supervising the uh the work and you know it, it was it was very interesting and, and and also you know that's another side of the business that we don't always think about because we these movies are successful we think well everybody knew it was gonna be successful and right. and yet the heaviness the, the head the pressure the stress of taking on something like that and and making sure you do everything you can to support it as a producer and hopefully making it the best that it can be. But then ultimately you got to just let it go and see what happens. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy how much, how, how, well, there, there have been movies that, that have bankrupted be. companies. Yeah, absolutely. So, oh yeah. Well, yeah, I understand yeah. that pressure because you just never know, you know, you just right. never know. And, and oftentimes the, the, people think well you got a big budget and stars that's really all you need and and man there are just way too many critical critical <laughs> elements um sure. you know that that, that that are necessary i mean with lord of the rings the story's already there essentially the story's already there it's whether or not you're going to believe the world and you can make the world something that people are going to want to sit and and you know pour themselves into and i just thought i thought peter jackson did a brilliant job with that but now we're talking about movies let's get back, let's to, go books. back to the book yes i want to know here. about i want to know about the series behind you unless you want to talk about something well, i'm going to get to that i'm going to get to that one second i'm going to start first okay the, the, one of the things that I, I did love was was the hardy boys books i love the hardy boys nancy drew and ah. again funny it's because and you were going movies because i only got into those books because of the tv series <laughs> and i know they were around forever. My mom loved those books as a kid when she was a kid. <laughs> so my mom loved those books. But then the TV series came out, you know, the, the Sean Cassidy, Parker Stevenson. And I loved that series. And that got me to go start reading the books. <laughs> and I loved those books. I started pouring through those books too. And it's just each, you know, I love mysteries. I love mystery books too. And this was, you know, a mystery for kids kids and it was all the same under that same umbrella but uh but hardy boys nancy drew stuff after wow oh that, that's I, I never read any hardy boys i what i found what i found no. and I, 
it, and I found this in the library. Now that we're talking, you're, you're making me think of other books where I did read, read kids books because of a library card I had. Oh my gosh, this is so interesting. When I was, yeah, when I was eight, eight years old, I think there was a project at school where we had in conjunction with the library, you got, uh, you had a card that looked like a suitcase and you, you got stickers from the library every time you read a book um, and you could put it on your suitcase, like, like almost like a passport stamps, like where you traveled around the world. And it was just designed to get us to go out and read books. And, and the one I, the series that I found at the time was Encyclopedia Brown, which oh, I really things. enjoyed. Yeah, I really enjoyed those. But then again, it, it was, I, I was so odd. It's like I didn't jump off and read other mysteries because of because of that. So the Hardy Boys just did not, you know, did not end up on my shelf. That's that's awesome. <laughs> I think that they even and I, I may I think I don't think I'm misremembering, but I, I'll have to check this out. I think they even, you know, the, the Hardy Boys has just been a continuous thing through the years. You know, they, they had the original set, they came out and then they kept adding to it. I think because of the TV series, the set of books that started coming out after that, they started making uh, Joe be a singer you know, or something <laughs> like that because of the Sean Cassidy element. So I think they started to try to incorporate that element into the books. And I, I might be wrong, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm not. But I think they started pushing things from the TV series into the books that were done around that time. Yeah, I, I did. I did not watch the series either. <laughs> I was not interested. Just wasn't interested. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I really wasn't. I mean, I, I, you know, I don't know why. I mean, I, I probably thought it was kind of a che cheesy show, and so I just, you know, didn't. I, I just wasn't interested. <laughs> I couldn't help it. <laughs> so here we go. Yeah, oh, differences. I did yep. love. I did love. No. Well, now, uh, so well, I will talk about the series behind me, and this is probably when I think of one series as a kid, it's this one. And for many, many reasons. And, and, so, um, and I, I even have the, the first one, right? There it is right here. <laughs> the choose your own adventure series there. The this first one was the cave of time and it came out in 79. And I was not living in the country in 79. I think that, that's when I moved. I didn't move back to 81, but uh, by 81, they already had many of these out. This this whole series is written in second person. It's always you are the star of the series. And it says you do this, you do that. So they don't have a main character. It's always you, which at that age, I just love that. I love huh. that I'm the star of this book. And I, you know, you always put yourself in the main character's shoes anyway, especially when you're a kid, you're reading, oh, I, I would do this as you know, I would do this if I were Harry Potter. I would do this if, you know, I would, this other character, if I were Frank Hardy, or Joe Hardy, I would do all these. But here it's specifically saying you are the main character. So, you know, you, so you're going on and each one was di with different things. And you had the, like I said, the choose your own adventure. Like, you know, you read a thing, you know, you come to the, you come to the uh, edge of the edge of the cliff and your outlaws are chasing you. Do you turn the turn and face the outlaws? Turn to page 14. You jump off the cliff and see into the water below and try to escape that way. Turn to page 21. So the whole book is turn to this page, turn to that page based on your choices. So you, you, if you read it straight through, it's going to be a jumbled mess. But they, they, they started putting all the little chapters all around sprinkled throughout the book. So I, my, all my books were dog-eared you know, and written and checked off and, you know, pen, which ones endings I did already. Cause you know, you see here, like even the cave of time, how many endings does it 40 cave of time had 40 endings, 40 possible endings. Oh so my gosh. I, I, you know, based upon what you did. And a lot of, a lot of them were like really <laughs> brutal. They killed you off. If you do all, <laughs> all these different choices. <laughs> not, so, but I kept, I kept dog earing dog the uh, pages, the books, you know, the, the pages, which I with the last choice was at. And so I could then follow along to the other choices and see. So, like I said, I have check marks throughout all my books of this. And I, I, I did have all the original series, which I think was 182. And oh, then, my gosh. and then uh, through the years, 
I didn't have them anymore. And then later on, I was already in my, uh, I guess, 30s or something. I was already in my 30s when I started going back and through eBay, buying all the ones that I lost again. <laughs> so, I'd, so I could wow. build up the collection again. I love this series so much. And what another reason that I do love it, and there were also, by the way, endings in, in these books that you know you couldn't get to. And I didn't know this at the time. I only read this out later, which you could not get to straight. You had to cheat to find it. They had like an ending in the book that you could not get to any, any way. You had to like just find the ending. So they did some things like, you know, I guess little Easter eggs in the books too, that, uh, you know, to make, to let you go and searching for these certain endings. But like I said, I love them. And I always put myself in the shoe and it allowed me, you know, the, uh, the cave of time, time travel. They had the mystery of the Maya and which I was always fascinated by the Mayan culture, always, always. And so it got to be like, you know, an archeologist in Mexico. You have the Deadwood City. I'm looking at over there behind me, like a Western. And I, by the way, I love the Mayan so much that I, I named my daughter Mayan because <laughs> okay, that. that's, she now, loves hearing that. But that mystery, yes. mystery solved. <laughs> yes, that is exact. That is exactly why, because I love I love the Mayans as a kid. I love the Mayan culture, so that is why she is named that. But um, but I like I said, I just everything about this series, and the main reason is. I identify this with my dad because he would always take me like once a week to the mall. We went, we would go to the mall, whatever. And they had the, the those days they had the bookstores in the mall, B Dalton's Walden books. Mm -hmm. And uh, which I miss both of those. And once a week he would buy me the next, another book in the series. So when I do read those, I think of my dad, you know, buying me these books. I, I do associate this series with him. Oh, that's that's great. And I'm looking behind you, but I can't really see. Are, are they written by different people or all by the yeah, same Yeah, all different. All different. There, there are many. A lot of the authors did multi books, but they're yeah. all different. Uh, they're like 180. They were like many. And they still they started revamping them up again today. And uh, that I would love to do. <laughs> I, I told my agent if I, if I get that. Uh, I would love to write a, a choose your own adventure book one day. I don't like there is something my heart would so be in because oh. of this <laughs> that is just i mean you know that is just an amazing idea and i can't believe again this is a title i've never heard of not some one something i didn't pick up i'm never uh, i was never exposed to it and i'm just looking around at the covers right now staring at them that i mean they sound like great great stories but what a great idea and i think and i don't know the name of the show but there's a new netflix series i believe it's yes. on netflix where you actually get to do that you get to choose your own route through the story are you aware of this yes i'm trying to remember which the name of that title is <laughs> it's it's a weird I, title um well we're gonna I'm leave look this our, up while you're talking yes we're gonna leave it so. yeah we can't leave our listeners um hanging like that let alone the co-host i i because because <laughs> it's something that i wanted to check out and and always in an idea that intrigued me because i i think it's 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 I, I think and you know I know writing a good story is hard enough when you can come up with an ending that's that's you know that's awesome but to come up with multiple endings and multiple storylines for the same for the same essential concept I think is just an, an extraordinary uh, an extraordinary achievement let alone um, you know let alone I'm sure an, an amazing an amazing read well they had they had um the choose your own adventure dvds which i did get and i did like i did like those um but there was i did and i watched the netflix one and i can't and i try to remember the thing i'm trying to look it up right now uh there it is bandersnatch that's is right that yeah, black yes. there's a black mirror episode bandersnatch i started watching the bandersnatch and it what made it fun in the in the um book was not as much fun to me in the movie, <laughs> just doing it right. as a movie, because right. there were too many things to click. And if I wanted to go back, it was I found it very difficult to go back and watch the alternate routes at times. Mm -hmm. And I thought I was going to be so into this. And they do have some interactive ones for kids, which I did not know about. I'm looking right here on uh, Netflix that um, right 
they have like a Carmen San Diego one that's on uh, Netflix also interactive. So I, I, that might be more fun for me. <laughs> I would see that I would go back and look at the Bandits. <laughs> Bandersnatch was difficult. I did start watching it and it was difficult for me to go through and keep my attention at all the different uh, choices. Yeah, I just I had just heard about it. I hadn't seen it or tried to or tried to see it. But but no, I, uh, you know, I, I love that. I that idea. Choose your own adventure. I mean, that's just that's just in, that's incredible. I think, you know, over my shoulder, I see Mystery of the Maya. That was one of Yeah, oh, yeah, particular. it's right there. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and and she, she's here, like, listening. And I, I think she hates the fact that uh, she's named after that. <laughs> we all, I don't know why we always hate our, hate our namesakes for, for some strange reason. And then, it, and then it changes as you get older and, you know. Don't worry, Maya. Uh, you'll 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 <laughs> you'll enjoy it more one day in, in the future. <laughs> no, I have to ask. I remember asking you before this too, and I think you said, and I, I, I'm asking for a specific reason here too. Uh, you you loved, I believe you said once the, the Willy Wonka book, right? I w- I'm looking at it right now. I was going to say I have to bring it up. Yeah, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I did. Right. So that that's one of the things to me that I have. I love those books. I loved all the Roald Dahl books. Mm-hmm. And and I didn't notice the time. I read them all. To it's only later on that I found out like what a terrible, terrible anti-Semite he was. <laughs> so and, yeah, and, and I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. I now and I I don't let. The, can you separate the art from the person? And I do try to. I don't try not to let him. You know how knowing how he was. To take away my enjoyment from those kids' books. Well, it, it, yeah, but, and, and you know what? I'm aware. I'm I'm very much aware of that, and I I I I I think you know it's 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 interesting. You know, th- these are these are interesting times to be to to be dealing with 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 these things, and I and I and I have to say I can't. I, I'm not really very good at separating myself from from knowing that about the artist to continue to enjoy their work. I think it does taint my very much. It very much taints my feelings about it. And um, and you know you can be one kind of person. You can still make great art. But if you're you know if you're willing to to share with the world these sorts of thoughts and feelings you have, then you better be prepared to face the backlash i mean i i right. think that's i think that's that's only fair and i and i and i i think that's true in a lot of situations you know there's performers that that you know i just don't really enjoy their work anymore because of certain things they say and do and represent and and you know i i i, I yeah so i i do not i'm not very good at separating myself and quite it's often fair, no. i just don't want to know about people that's the thing Yes, that's so that thing. that doesn't happen, you know, but quite often they are putting themselves out so far that you really have no choice but to interact with it at, you know, in, in, in some way. And then all of a sudden it's in your head and and then it's all then it's all over. It's over over for me. It's not like I'm talking not about say. cancel culture where I cancel but. somebody, but it just <laughs> it just changes my whole feeling about it. And it becomes distasteful. And then it's like, well, I don't really want to go see their movie, or you know, I don't think <laughs> that's I what I feel another, with like another. Book. I do that with Mel Gibson now, but yeah. I but I, I do recognize Dahl's contributions to children's literature. So I, I yeah. I would still read his books. And that's the funny thing. I still read his books and I would enjoy the books. And, you know, I don't want anyone to stop reading his books and put the things, but yeah, it did, like I said, do it, it did taint it a little bit for me, of course. Um, but I, I, I'm like you though. It, it's funny because I will do the books, but I won't go see movies by certain people now because of I, what I know learned about them. Yeah, I mean it's it's yeah, I, I and I'm 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 the same way. Clearly, when I experienced, you know, I saw Willy Wonka and the Shock Factory, which is my favorite movie from, um, you know, from my childhood, and then, and then I wanted to read it, and, you know, when you're not, you know, but when when, as a young person, I think I didn't, I was, suddenly suddenly exposed to things like well the 
titles different? Why is the book called Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? And why is the <laughs> movie Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory? Because it really is about Charlie. It's not about Willy Wonka. And then you learn things later on, you know, that have everything, and then including Escape Witch Mountain. You know, why, why did they, why did they change it so much? And in my opinion, for the better, sometimes that that happens because mm -hmm. I'm going to bring up a very controversial book that I think is a far better movie than it is a book. You know, we're going to get a ration of hate <laughs> for this, but The Shining, um, you know, I mean, the most famous horror story of all time, the biggest, you know, biggest hit hit horror story of Stephen King. But I just when I read it and I read it recently so maybe I'm tainted as well because I've spent uh, the shining as a film is something I is probably the second film I've seen the most next to 2001. I watch it. I do mm. at this point now, I just watch it every year at Halloween, but I used to watch it at every, every opportunity because it's just to me, one of the most extraordinary films ever made. And it's such, it's like, it's like such a great ghost story. And then I go and I read the book and I felt like, wow this has just has none of the scariness that i <laughs> expected it to have i don't get it and, and and you know so i'm not going to dwell on this for too long so we can get back to our children's books but that but that has always interested me so much and i think even as with something like charlie and the chocolate factory that was a very early experience with that how these things are changed from the novel novel to the movie or from the movie to a novel etc because here now that we're talking about it 2001 was co you know the screenplay was co-written with Stanley Kubrick by Arthur C. Clarke. Well, Arthur C. Right. In part was part of their marketing plan because Arthur C. Clarke wanted to write the novel, his novel version of this story he worked on for six years, and did so. And of course, I picked it up to read it because I consumed anything about two thousand one that I could find, and I just I thought, wow! All of a sudden, they just he tried to explain everything in the movie and. And it's now not interesting to me. You know, I mean, I found the book absolutely, <laughs> completely uninteresting. And so, you know, I mean, <laughs> we could go round and round about all these, all of these different things. But, but you know, definitely. I'm with you on both, by the way, about The Shining and and 2001. I enjoyed the movies much more than the books. <laughs> oh my gosh! Okay, okay, yes. okay. I, yes. <laughs> you know, I, I know there are people. Um, yeah. You know, and a dear friend of ours who is another author, um, Jan, she she can't believe I didn't like The Shining, the, the book. She just could not. She was absolutely like her wringing her hands over over the thought. But you know, I I I wanted to see what the inspiration was, and and oh God, we're so digressing. But I I think Stanley Kubrick is probably one of the best interpreters of books. Yes. And I think I remember there was a quote from him that said he said something like this is such a great haunted house story. And halfway through the book, it just goes off the rails. He, it, it, he just took what he thought were the very best elements from Stephen King and made his own version, his own, his own story. And I just thought, good grief, you know, that's incredibly, it's incredibly arrogant. Um, but it worked. <laughs> You know, we're, we're, we're going to have to dive into this much more when we do our Kubrick. Episode I think so. Time. I think but, so. Uh, yeah. Yes. But yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I did like that much. I, I, not that I didn't dislike the work, but I just thought the movie was just so eerie. Just there was like a feeling to it, to me, that that movie. Oh, and it's if you, yeah, right, anyway. So one, one kid's book, which, which kid's book was like your absolute favorite? Well, see, Willie, so Willie was Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Then. Charlie, Charlie, Chocolate Factory, only because I, I read it at probably my youngest age. And, and and I'm not saying, you know, we're talking about children's books or books we read as as children. And and and, and I th and I think I think I have to go to what I think was the most powerful book I read. And it was it was in junior high. So I was, you know, I was probably 12 years old when I discovered Jonathan Livingston Seagull mm -hmm. and um, I'm even choked up right now just 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 saying that because I I, I, I I thought I thought that was the most overwhelming and again this is not a children's book it's it's not aimed at, at children by any stretch but I got it I just got it and the the ideas you know the the ideas that are expressed there in such a 
simple story. I mean, you know, it's about animals, anthropomorphized animals. It's, you know, it's a little bit like Animal Farm, which I've never, I think I did read Animal Farm. Actually, I did think I read it. You know, a way of telling, you know, a very, a very, very, a very big idea, good or bad, you know, through these talking animals that in a, in a way it does appeal to children. And I think, in, you know, it, it, it could appeal in a way and yet deliver these messages. I just, I found it overwhelming and powerful. I read it numerous times. I'm going to show a picture of my stack of paperbacks uh, in the <laughs> YouTube version of this because I've kept them all. And the spine of that is actually the spine of that's not because it was such a small book. It's not really broken. There's, there's several of the others, including Lord of the Rings there where it's just, they're just all torn up because I just kept <laughs> cracking them open to, to read them. But I reread Jonathan Livingston Seagull yesterday, just, just to, again, revisit that and wept like a baby. I'm a big weeper. I'm a big crier <laughs> and man, you know, movies can get me, but nothing get can, can pull my emotional, like it, pull my emotions out like a really good read and and i just i i found that book so inspiring and it was so thought-provoking for me and and little did i know and, and because you know it's just it just had a huge impact on me at a at a tender age that i really appreciated so if i have to pick one out of all of this stuff all of these from you know from you know, eight years old to 18 i would have to say that would be the one you know I, by the way i do Animal Farm just chilled me, chilled <laughs> to the yeah. when I read that. I think I read that in high school, and yeah, it yeah. that that stuck with me even to now. That it's I, I I've not gone back to reread it. I've only read it that one time, and it just I, I bothered me so much that I've not gone back to reread that book. <laughs> well, yeah, the, the, his other book that did that to me was 1984 that yeah. <laughs> um, that that I I read in high school and and that chilled me and haunted me for and I remember I remember so many details from that book it's it's ridiculous it made me so incredibly uncomfortable and was so incredibly terrifying and yet you know more than one thinking person you know has commented that we're sort of living in a day and age where. <laughs> we're big brothers taking over, but we invited him into our lives, yep. you know, and, and, it is and people who have, <laughs> and I, 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 I have to encourage anyone, anyone who is trying to make heads or tails about what is kind of happening in the world, both good and bad to read 1984. Cause it's yeah. extraordinary. It's the best illustration in, in the form of fiction um, that, that you can have for, for how, how, you know devastating these sorts of practices and ideas and you know thought crimes and it, it, it's just it, it it's it really is a must read book and I, I know it's on most every time i see a top 10 list it's 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 in there. There. yeah so i i consider this i put it in my childhood list because i did i read it in high school i did i read Han animal farm probably too young and i think i might go back I, and and read it again just to just to uh, just to experience it in a in a more you know mature sure. mindset. But you know it's funny with you said children's books. I I limited my list to, with children's books. I guess during upper single digits to like you know mid teens th those years because there were many books that you know you consider children's books that I you know I loved when I was like a little kid. You know like like the Sesame Street books and you know the monster oh, at the yeah. end of this book yeah I, I love those too but I didn't I didn't put those into this list because you know I'm I was only thinking a specific set of years for right. this for this book for this list that we had I mean but yeah, I, was, uh, I was trying to very much do the same thing but it's just so funny how these the titles that I'm that that, <laughs> that fall into that are are all all adult books except <laughs> except for Charlie and the Chocolate Factory um because i i read a fair amount of of edgar Allan poe um in my very i want to say early teens when i was 12 years old because i think one of the one of the things i'm most grateful for about my career as a child actor um were the uh set teachers that i got mm -hmm. to work with um 
they were all they were all women and some some of the smartest the smartest most amazing women I've ever met in my life. And there were two of them that were very important to me. And one was Irene Burke. She was the set teacher. I, I met her on, um, on an episode of Gunsmoke I worked on. It was the first time I worked with her. And I liked her so much that when we went to do Escape to Witch Mountain, um, I was asked, did you have a preference in set teachers? And I said her name immediately. And she ended up being our set wow. teacher. And wow. that was something I got to do over the course of my career, which is choose. And as long as they weren't working on something else, they always came to work with me. And that's Peggy, great. a woman named Peggy Cobb was another one. And she, she was just the most brilliant human I've ever met and probably ever will meet. I mean, a, just, she was she she was what you would hope a college professor would be so literate <laughs> so well read so well educated so inspiring and she didn't lecture she didn't she it, she taught through conversation and and she would make reading suggestions for me because inevitably when you got three hours of school on set with a private tutor you go through your homework pretty fast then you have to have your the set teacher ends up making up assignments for you so mm -hmm. she would grill me with spelling you know spelling um spelling tests and spelling lists and she would suggest books and she suggested because she knew i kind of liked you know some fanciful stories she pushed me towards Edgar Allan Poe. So I read him at a pretty young age as well. So he's like in my earlier, my earlier uh, years. And, well, this um, begs the question. I want to know, did, so did they have like a set list of books for geared to your age or they just catered it to what you liked and adapted a lesson around them? Yeah, that's, they, they just got to know me and they knew what I was interested in. And, and um, as a matter of fact, I probably, Ray Bradbury came into my life at that same age and probably because of Peggy's suggestion. I like science fiction. I, I told her about the books I read and she just, she just made recommendations. And so she suggested Martian Chronicles and I picked it up and was like, oh my God, that was another. Yeah. And, and, and as a matter of fact, I, you know, and I, that, lovely interview you um you gave me um for the mixed up files web website you had asked me i think i mentioned i think i mentioned it in there because i remember opening that book reading the very first story which is which uh, the first short story because obviously it's a collection of short stories that adds up to mm -hmm. an overall arc of sorts but um rocket summer and it's less than a page long and I mm -hmm. thought, oh my gosh, how are you able to tell a complete story in less than a page and absolutely fill my head with more images and more ideas and more feelings in, in, a, in, a, in a science fiction book? It just blew my mind. And so then I ended up falling in love with Ray Bradbury. And I read a lot of Bradbury in my early junior high school years. And I still don't know where that, you know, I, th I, think, I think one of the things we're, you know, we're learning here is, is that... that I don't know that there's a set restriction on books children should not read. And I, there's that age, mm -hmm. probably eight or nine, when our awareness is enough that you can handle a more mature literature um, and, and get something out of it. You might not get all the concepts or all the ideas, but you can sure. still be, you know, powerfully moved and influenced by, you know, by, uh, by that level of literature. Um, and I think it's awesome. You know, when we were young, I don't know how much quote unquote, you know, and you're the author in this, in this area. So you can tell me how that's broken down now, because it didn't seem like back in the seventies, there was middle grade stories. You kind of had, you know, the ones that are behind you, but I don't know. I, I wonder how big of a, um what do you call it you category it's not a genre it's a it's a category right. of writing for a certain age group i just wonder because there it's so it's such a massive market now and i'm i'm a i'm aware of it but whether it's pre-middle grade or you know how you define those things i'm wondering what it was like i think i think you're absolutely right is that when we were kids i don't remember this being broken down into the same categories as now i now there's definitely uh, a line between middle grade and young adult. 
And a lot of the stories from back then, I think these are just kids' books and any yeah. age could pick them up. And I'm thinking like a lot of like, you know, the, the Judy Bloom books, you know, at, uh, you know, talking about, you know, a girl getting her period. And I don't know now where that would fit if it would be a middle grade book or they would put that in young adult. So, and there was, I don't remember a concept of it back then. I just went to the kids section and picked out books. I don't remember it being broken into separate categories. Yeah, I, I didn't think so. And, and of course I didn't look, I, I, I avoided the kids section. I just wasn't interested. Um, so, but, but, you know, things like you mentioned, the Hardy boys and, and even the adventure series that, you know, that, that, that you have, you know, uh, behind you, <clears throat> behind you in the, in the picture, probably I, I, I would have enjoyed, I would have enjoyed, but I just gravitated to, to more adult um, oriented books and stories and authors. And, but probably I think it had a great deal to do with the influence of my, my set teachers, because it was, I always felt like I got a college education without the benefit of having mm -hmm. to go to college because they really challenged me and 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 um and you know it's just it's so nice to have a one-on-one -on -one tutoring uh, opportunity especially by gifted by gifted teachers because sure. they are catering to you 100 you're not in a class with everybody else where you know that curriculum is set for your age and you know you're you you, you know but i did even have teachers in in junior high school that guided me to certain like English teachers, lovely English teacher who introduced me to the man in the iron mask. He said, I think you would really like, like this book. And I freaking loved it. I mean, I <laughs> loved it. So, you know, that does happen, but anyway, I'm. Yeah, no, but um, you know, it's an, yeah. an, an English teacher of mine in high school and I'll, I'll mention her name too. And I reached out to her uh, like many years ago, Linda Sperney. Uh, she's the one that got me believing in myself for, for writing, actually. And I say this to a lot of my class visits, that uh, uh, the impact that a teacher can make, because, you know, before then, when I was, I used to write stories all the time. I write for myself. I wrote for my, you know, I showed them to like friends, maybe family. And, you know, your family's supposed to tell you that, oh, this is really good. So, but this, you know, <laughs> you can believe it, but they're supposed to tell you that. This was the first time like an adult that's not, supposed to tell me that she like pulled me aside you have a talent for this and that that struck with me that really that like impacted me a lot in high school when the, when a teacher you know was able to tell me something that you know that made it that influenced me that made a difference to me the back then so uh yeah teachers play an enormous part oh i i completely agree and that was going to be one of my questions um what what i mean do you do you remember what you know, at what age did you, did you think, man, I'd like to do this too? Because obviously you know, reading is going to inspire that, but. You know, it's funny. I'll, I'll get, I'll take a point about you in a second there too, that, which I'll, I'll go back to mine one second. You had a, a unique thing and I didn't even occur to me when we were talking about this because you grew up on a lot of sets and through those years, you did not have also have the experience. I don't think of other, the kids saying hey i really like this book series you know classmates or whatever so you know to like influence like you would go and pick up a book series and i know that that's a big part of you know kids buying books that their friends recommended but if you were like getting your teachers like were catering things to you what you might like so it's a different it's a different environment kind of yeah i you know i i i don't always want to make it sound like I lived my entire life on a set because I was in school a lot, you know, a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Cause I, you know, if I did three, four, f well, five or six shows a year <clears throat> that didn't, a lot of them were happened during the summer. So I was, you know, I was in the public school system. I didn't go to a, a professional right. school, which, which um, might've been actually uh, good for me. It, it um, cause I look, I, I, I was an awkward child. I was very shy. I did not have a lot of friends and I just didn't, I didn't socialize. I didn't hang out with other kids. I just didn't, I, I, I wasn't interested. So you're, I mean, you are right to a certain extent. I didn't have that, that interaction with other kids. And, and I always felt, I mean, you know, it's just so interesting because I always played characters who were, 
who are outsiders, you know, who are the awkward, you know, geeky, you know, awe-inspired outsiders that had to had to find their way and had to find their, mm -hmm. you know, their specialness. And I was, I was just very much like that as a child. Um, and so I, I, I didn't, you know, I, I didn't join groups in school. I, I, I didn't do things like that. I went to school, learned my lessons, took my homework and I got, I just, I went home. Um, that's why it's sort of funny for me to mention um, Lord of the Rings and how it, it was influenced. That was the one book I picked up because mm -hmm. yes, an, a student and who I didn't hang out with that those guys any other time. I was just in my art class because we had, we had it, you know, every, it was every day um, for close, you know, for a, a complete semester. And, um, and because they talked about, they talked about books, it was kind of unusual, but um, yeah. So, I mean, you know, I, I, I've tried to remember how much, how much that came up in school period, whether teachers talked about made suggestions to the class at large um and i can barely remember because you know i'm sure i had assigned reading projects but see i didn't i didn't read charlotte's web i've read some Stuart little books i didn't read charlotte's web i didn't i i didn't read you know so, many many of the books that so many other kids either had to read or definitely read at that age as, as sort of the, that group of books you're expected to read. Um, right. So yeah, but, um, but once I got steered a certain direction, I just started digging for my own stuff. And, you know, that was, that was always great fun. And, you know, finding these, these books randomly, cause it's, I mean, I found even it was difficult I, to read a, you know, a, a synopsis on the, on the cover of a book as to what it was about, as to whether or not I would even be interested. I just, I, I didn't came tell you the criteria. I, I, <laughs> I, something had to meet for me to pay for it, take it home and open it up. But once I did, and I got into it, I always made sure I finished it. So to find out, you know, whether I really liked it or not. And, and yeah. Well, going back to me, as for me with, with writing, I was always, like I said, I always used to write little stories for myself constantly. So it was like, you know, I was always doing it. But uh, I took a lot of theater classes and writing classes in both high school and college. And whenever we had to do, like in theater for one, exactly, we had to do like little group performances sometimes. And I'm the one that would write the stories. I'm the one that would write all the, 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 the plays and the things for all of us to perform. So, and I love doing that. You know, and I love the feeling of, you know, hearing my words come out of performers' mouths. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's there. It's like, you know, I, I just, I relished it. And so I did it in high school. I did it in college. I was always like the one who wrote our, our scenes and, you know, a little place. And so it was always with me, but it wasn't probably till um, mid 2000s that I thought, you know, hey, you know, I, I, got to try this because I hadn't tried it before then I didn't I like dabbled in stories but I didn't really go and try to write a book and everything and I remember the first thing that I wrote I was so proud of I was so oh you know I, I finished it I did it and I went to a conference and I got a critique with an agent and this <laughs> it was I laugh about it now and I laugh about it with a lot of my friends now she actually stood up, and I will not mention her name, but, I, you know, but my friends know who it is. She actually stood up at the table, placed her palms down on the table, leaned over to tell me how bad it was. <laughs> and, oh, my oh, gosh. So I'm like, wow. And it's like a 50, it's a, supposed to be, you're, you're paying for a critique, and it's supposed to be 15 minute increments. And she told me how bad it was, like in the first two minutes. And I'm looking at the clock. Oh wow! I have still have thirteen more minutes left. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> so so oh. she proceeded to rip me apart and just and she wasn't nice about it either. Like you know, no constructive criticism. She was telling me how bad this is, and and so at the end, I was I at, after a certain point, it got amusing to me in my head, and I just I wanted to end, and I did. I just thank okay, thank you. But at the end of the, at the end of the critique, I just wanted to say to her, so does that mean you're not interested in this? <laughs> 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 but that did force me to start taking it seriously, I guess, learning, learning craft. I read books, I went to, 
I took lessons with people, you know, people that I trust. And, uh, you know, and that forced me to become a little, and like, I think it was like a couple of years after that, that I first got an agent. I don't have the same agent anymore, but you know, that I lost that agent eventually, but it did, I did get an agent after a couple of years trying, but it was like, it took me, I think from the time I started seriously, it took me like seven years to sell. So to sell the first book and, uh, and that came out, I think, nine years after I first started something like it came, you know, it takes publishing is like moves at a snail's pace. So by the time it was sold to the time it came out, it was like nine years later after I first started taking it seriously. But that is, see, it's, that's so interesting that you use that number because I learned that number in Hollywood. It's the same thing with movies, generally speaking on average, if a movie gets made, from the day the writer says, I have an idea, I'm going to write a script, it takes nine years for it to come wow. to fruition. And that doesn't matter if it's a known person or an unknown person. And famously, um, that exact number came up, I believe, with Sil Sylvester Stallone when he wrote oh, wow. Rocky. And it took nine years to get that film made. And it, it, it I, I would hear it repeatedly over and over and over again. And it's something that, that, you know the more the more sage uh, people in in any of these businesses know once they've done it for a while is be excited, be passionate, but you got to be patient <laughs> oh, <laughs> because it's absolutely. going to take a long time. And there's a lot of beating up that 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 occurs, you know, through through those processes as well as you just outlined. I mean, certainly I had my share of it. Um, but I, 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 I so admire, you know, I'm going to say I now to this to, to today consider myself a writer, having completed what I what I consider a successful memoir that I'm right. extremely happy with. I love the storytelling in it, even though it's my own stories, and I learned through a lot of of tripping and falling and doing a lot of really bad work before discovering that thing. And I don't know what the thing is for me. I know it's different for everybody, but where I finally went, oh, I think I know how to do this. And then it started to unravel. And then I fell in love with it. And I really love writing now, but I've always been scared to death of it and intimidated by anybody that could write. I mean, I tried as, you know, you know in, my, in, my, in my teens and in high school to, to write, you know, things here and there, but I just, I, I, I just, I was too intimidated and I had no idea. I just didn't feel like I had a connection to it. And it's, and it's funny. Cause I think now if I had, if I had tapped into this thing that I tapped into at this point in my life, I probably would have set off on a career to write because it's, you know, a lot of people can't handle it because it's such a, you know, even being an artist, these are lonely pursuits. You do this by yourself and you, you spend time in your own right. head and that's how I've lived my whole life. So it was actually made more sense for me than anything else that I've done. And I'm grateful to find it now. And I think it's incredible, but I did spend, you know, it's like, you got to spend a lot of time. Definitely have to spend, I heard what we're talking about writing well, <laughs> from books. The business, but you, first you of all, spend I, I, do, a lot I, of I love your memoir. And I did tell you this today. And I, and I we've spoken privately. I thought it was really incredibly well written. Um, I don't know how it was before, and I've, I've only read this latest version, but I thought it was so engaging. But yeah, but like you said, you this business is set up to weed out the people that don't have the stomach for it, and it's sure it's the same in acting. And it's the same. In well, writing. yeah, and it's it's that, not just talent. You got you got to have talent. Right. You have to have good ideas, and you also have got to be you you you've got to be made of 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 you know very thick stuff. Because Big it will skin. it will destroy you. <laughs> yes, they all Big will. That's, perseverance. Yeah, it's just true. Of, I I believe it's true of every artistic pursuit. Because you, you know, on the one hand, you know you have to follow your you have to follow your heart, and you have to follow your 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 own set of you have to be your own person. But you've also got to learn. I mean, there's a lot <laughs> to learn in everything. And I did I did spend a lot of time, not quite the same route you and other novelists I'm sure went through because 
but I did, I did spend a lot of time learning about story structure and just, you know, the, uh, the reading the power of myth and and I did it I did it because I wanted to write screenplays I wanted to demystify the screenwriting process and and that was a very exciting thing to do never had anything done I did get one screenplay optioned for a year from a production company which I was thrilled with the first one actually the first one that I completed that I said I think this is actually good and it did get some attention but I just loved the pro. I mean, I just find it exhilarating. I mean, as exhilarating as reading a good story is writing a good story. And so there it is. But did we pick your, already pick your number one book <laughs> well, from your I, childhood? Uh, or because you said, you, two, you know, I said, I'll, I'll do the two because my all time favorite, and I did read it first as a child, and it struck me with, is Hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy mm, and mm -hmm. i i read it as a kid and that just oh books can be this funny and that probably influenced <laughs> me you know i like to write for the most part with a, with a lot of humor i do like to write a lot of put inject a lot of humor in my books and it, and, it was nothing you, like I had ever read before. And I'm going to interrupt you because it, you do, because in, in, in the two books that I, your, your, your two uh, books I put up, I found myself laughing out loud and I don't laugh out loud in a lot of books. And, and <laughs> you, you hit those moments really well. So that, that is definitely a quality of, of your writing that, that, that is effective and I enjoy. So, but no, but yeah. I, I think this was, this was to me like, you know, this, you know, I, I feel like I said, I did not realize that books can be this funny. And I, I'd smiled through other books, maybe laughed here and there, but I was laughing during Hitchhiker's Guide and it was just so bizarre. So, so you know, absurd and done intentionally to be absurd and funny. And it was, <laughs> I love that book so much. So I, I, like I said, I always tell people that's my number one, uh, but I will, I do have the co number one, just because of all the specials, like we've mentioned, is the choose your own adventure books just because of all you know besides the books themselves which i loved it's just i think i tie it to a special time in my life a special you know tradition in my life like i said going to the store with my father and him always buying me one buying me the next one and the next one every week you know getting me another book and i went through those books fast so <laughs> you know but he was he would always pick them up for me so those are probably my two top and the choose your own adventure is i'm saying the series as a whole instead of just the, the one book in from the series well any other honorable mentions that we have i think we i think we did cover them well i mean i read <laughs> um i do like you know the ones that came later on but i was older so i wouldn't read them as a kid i did love the goosebump series i do love the harry potter series but uh those did come later on for me and i read i read them more as a, an adult than <laughs> you know, as, as a kid, um, I read, you know, I like this, you, I did not read, I read a mixture of kids books and adult books when I was a kid. So, yeah. uh, we had them all. Well, I'd but, be curious uh, if yeah, anybody no. comments, if anybody can comment on, uh, on this show, just to, to, to see if they had similarities, uh, with us between, you know, reading more adult books as children. I'd, 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 I'd love to hear about that. So oh, I'm going to put, I'm going to, I'm going to put you on the spot this goes outside of our childhood thing. Um, your, your number one book of all time and from any period of time. You know, I do say, I do say still, I do say it's Hitchhikers. Um, ah, okay. I do still say it's Hitchhikers for that, but there are so many books that I just loved, loved that, you know, that mean a lot to me still. Um with hitchhikers and i love the book chiefs Stuart woods book chiefs i don't know if you've read that one three no. generations of police chiefs uh you know all solving all working on the same murder case and um centennial james Mishner book i loved centennial and uh there's something you know what and it's one kid's book now that i do do love a lot and uh just because the postcard and, and, I, and i'm friends with him on facebook and i gotta look up tony abbott that's it and i've written to him too and he answered he was gracious enough to answer me too i've, I've written to him about this um 
I loved it because it takes place in St. Pete, Florida, which is where I spent a lot of my childhood. Oh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was a mystery that took place in St. Pete. So I, I uh, that's, that's I it. I, I probably, I still say Hitchhikers for my number one all time favorite. And you? Yeah. Well, for most of my life, it was To Kill a, Bo- to Kill a Mockingbird. Great book. Because, uh, yeah, obviously, I know it's almost stating the obvious, but I, I remember I just I, I I read that for the first time in high school. It's a book I went back to and reread um, numerous numerous times, and 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 at the same time, that's one of my favorite movies. It's it's so funny. I mm-hmm. thought I thought the movie version of it was brilliant, and it was so it was so emotionally reflective of 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 how the book felt when I read it. So I've put those two up there, but this is going to sound rather shocking. I knocked it off the top spot when I read for the first time in my life, just last year, Peter Pan. Really? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I, I had, I, I, I did not expect it. And I was trying to think of even why I decided to read it. Oh, someone in a Facebook um, book club that, um, I'm, I'm a member of just popped up the title and said, I revisit this, um, every time I travel, mm-hmm. one of my favorite books. And I thought, God, that is so interesting. Cause of course, you know, the story is mythical. If you haven't read it, it's mythical, but from so many different directions, either from, you know, just Disney or, or, or all of that. But I, then I just said, you know, I'm, I'm going to give it a shot. And I, Usually with with stories that are written that are in a certain time period, I find a little challenging just due to language and just story, the storytelling techniques are, you know, more contemporary for that time and less adaptable to my tastes today. But I had the most overwhelming visceral reaction to that story that just, and again, I was in heaping sobs at the end of it. And I just thought, this is the greatest Mm -hmm. book I have ever read and will likely ever read for the rest of my life. I've read it. I read it. I read it three times in a very short period of time. And I, I just, yeah. And I don't know if you have read it, but I, I have read it but yeah. been, with a kid that I have not read it since then. It is, I think through an adult and the adult filter, you might see things in there that you oh, didn't sure. see from a younger age, but it, you just talk about it is so to me beautiful and tragic peter pan is the most beautiful tragic character that i have that that anyone has ever conceived of as far as i'm concerned this is just my obviously my opinion and then to learn that it was started out as a play his book the book was an adaptation of a of a of the play was even more extraordinary to me in a way and um and I, I just, I just, I, I, I just, in terms of just fancy, uh, fantasy, fantasy storytelling, the just, I, I just, man, I just, I just find it incredibly rich and and very very powerful because it's just, you know, it's not wrapped up. It's not in. There's no, there's no nutshell to the story. You feel both full and empty at the end of it, which is to me, for a writer to be able to achieve that is beyond amazing to me and just in terms of my taste what i i like to look for you know i love a happy ending you know i love (laughs) a happy ending i love when things are resolved i love it when things aren't resolved in in you know in in just when you bring genius to any any anything and and it just was totally unexpected i was not expecting it i thought it was going to be a more fanciful you know kind of story and, and on the other hand, I thought, well, now I got to read Mary Poppins because Mary Poppins has got to be just as good. Oh, my goodness. I know they're massively <laughs> popular books, but I was bored, bored really? stiff. And I said, oh, well, you know, it's uh, everybody sees something different. <laughs> you know, what? I did enjoy those books. You remind, I did enjoy those books as a kid, but I've not revisited them. Might be by, might be different now because tastes do change. But I would, Well, yeah, I, would, I can see. Yeah, I'm sorry. I can see how they could be more oriented towards a younger, a younger audience or younger readership. I'm, I'm curious if I would like the Mary Poppins books now. I've not read them since I was a kid, and I did enjoy them back then. 
Did you see the J.M. Barry, uh, the movie about J.M. Barry's life? I, I don't, yep. can't remember the name now, but. Yeah, it's, it, I can't I, remember I watched, the name of it, it either. Starts. It's a, it's a beautiful film. Um, and as a matter oh, okay. of fact, um, Tia, my wife recommended it and she rarely recommends movies. Um, she had seen, she had seen it. I, 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 I don't, I don't know when, but after I read Peter Pan, she says, oh, well, you've got to see, you have to see the movie. And I thought, I thought that's kind of, I get my little bit of research learning about, about him revealed that it was, he was a playwright and then he wrote this book. And, you know, there was all that con controversy about him and, and the children that he spent time with, that he was accused of all kinds of horrible things that, that I, you know, clearly weren't true at a very strange time in our history when it came to those things. But I thought the movie was really beautiful and i'm i'm a big johnny depp fan anyway yes. um too. but when he does this kind of work it's it's it just it yeah it's it's a i i love the movie now, i think i think this was probably our longest episode which is shocking i didn't think we we're gonna go this long but <laughs> <laughs> i had a feeling because i mean we just ramble and of course i ramble and we digress but that's oh, uh, i think that's the think fun of it fun. but yeah. anyway, anyway th again uh if like I just said, agree, disagree with some of our selections. Uh, drop us a note in the comments. What were some of your favorite childhood books? And we'd love, we'd love to hear from you. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, again, this has been Pop Culture Retro. On behalf of myself and Ike Eisenman, thank you for watching. And please hit subscribe. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Pop Culture Retro, where no one was hurt during the making of this podcast. 